Hi friends, I'm Abby and welcome back to my channel. Today is it's time for my June wrap up. So chatting through everything that I read in the month of June. And in the month of June, I was taking part in the Shelf Space Olympic Games Readathon and I was the captain for Team Poseidon. And weirdly, but amazingly, Team Poseidon won. And that is not like Poseidon propaganda or anything. Like we actually won, we beat, we, 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 we came first. I would say like, got to beat Team Zeus, but got to beat Alan, not really Team Zeus. Sorry for everyone that has been like sucked into the Alan propaganda machine, but got to beat Alan who was the captain of Team Zeus. It was a lot of fun. And it really encouraged me to read. Like I read a lot and a lot more than I would say I normally do. Uh, it was definitely like the higher end of what I can read, especially considering how busy the month was in terms of work. So I'm very, very happy with how much I was able to read. The camaraderie like that it created and getting to meet people on Team Poseidon. Like, I just loved getting to, getting to know people and getting to know more people in the community. I read 12 books during the month of June, which comes to a total of 4,829 pages. So I'm very, very proud. I didn't quite hit the 5,000 mark, but that was, I wasn't exactly aiming for that or anything. So very happy with that. Uh, of these, eight of them were fantasy, three of them were sci-fi, and one of them was a contemporary romance. And so no real like changes to my reading there. Uh, three of the books were YA, one was new adult, and eight were adult. Again, sticking with my like normal theme of my demographics. My star ratings were a bit lower than normal. Uh, I had two five stars, one 4.5 star, two four stars, two 3.5 stars, and five three stars. So there was a lot of average. There wasn't anything bad, like I didn't hate anything that I read, but there was a lot of average. And then in terms of my series and how I'm doing with them, three of the books that I read were rereads. Uh, three of them were continuations in series and I started zero books and I finished, not I started zero series and I finished zero series. I have decided to not DNF, but like I was reading the Wicked series by Jennifer L. Armitra. I read the first book like many, many years ago and I had it on my like series thing and I've just shifted into the DNF pile. But I think like one day I could come back to it, but I just don't know if it's going to be anytime soon. So I just thought I, if I do restart it, I'll have to read the whole thing again. It's going to be like it's new. So I just feel as though it can be it's just going to be a completely new series when I read it. So my on the go is at 28. It feels like such a challenge to get that number down. Such a challenge. Moving into the books I read and the prompts that they fitted into, I read 12 of the 16 prompts. So I didn't quite get to them all, but I wasn't anticipating to get to them all either. So we'll just go through the order that I read them in roughly. Uh, so I started off the month by reading Graceling by Kristen Cashaw, which I put in for the EOS prompt, so first book in a series. This was a reread for me because I planned to reread the whole series. Well, not reread. I planned to reread this first book and then read the rest of the series. And I didn't get to reading the rest of the series. I don't. I, I get, all month I was like, I'm going to read Fire. I'm going to read Fire. I didn't, I didn't read Fire. All bitter blue. So I definitely still need to do that. <laughs> like that is the reason why I reread this book so that I continue with the series. Uh, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this as a reread. Um, I gave it four stars again, which is what I gave it the first time. I find it like it was a very fun, compulsively readable YA fantasy. It's older, like it's written 20, 2010, maybe 2008. So it's uh, an older story, but like I feel as though it really holds holds up with time uh, and it's very modern really but because there's it's very well, well written like the themes expressed in it were well done uh, and so I could say it completely holds up and is better than quite a few YA fantasies that are published in 2021 so I yeah I really really enjoyed it I really liked the characters I liked the world I liked the magic system so that each character well not each character but like you in this world you can be graced with a certain skill so our main character Katza she is graced with the ability to kill people uh, but you could be graced with like cookery or you could be graced with I don't know dancing or singing like you could have a grace in anything um, but I really liked this and I'm definitely excited to continue reading Kristen Cashel's books. I then read The Space Between Worlds by Mikhail Johnson and I liked this but I didn't love this uh, so this I gave this I read for the Hermes prompt because she does lots of traveling between worlds and I gave this I think three stars and it was it was fine and the thing is with this I really liked the premise so the premise being that in this world you are able to travel to parallel universes 
as long as the version of you in that world is dead. And that premise, I loved. I found that that was such an interesting premise. But like, I, I'm not like scientific, but it kept saying that there are 380 realities that you could travel to. And I'm like, well, if there's an infinite number of worlds, there must be more than 380 because there's infinite numbers. And repeatedly throughout this, she was like, oh, in another world, I could I could be doing this instead, or another world, I would have done this. And I'm like, well, if there were that many, then why is there only 380? And it just bugged me. It just, it really, really bugged me. And the thing is, I feel like it's such an interesting, interesting premise that you can travel to these worlds as long as you're dead there. And very, very interesting. But I just don't feel as though the story lived up to that premise like I feel as though we could have been following much more interesting characters and uh, ha have a much more interesting plot with that premise it just fell a bit flat for me I feel like e like excellent premise and then execution wasn't for me I mean I think the writing I though I had no problems at all with the writing style I just wasn't a, a fan of the plot I then read You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle for the Dionysus prompt because the British cover is pretty white. And I, again, this was another like three star. I liked it, didn't love it. It takes a lot for a romance to like get a good star rating from me because I'm, I, I don't know, I struggle to rate them highly. But I just, I struggled with their relationship. I struggled with their dynamics as characters because in this book, the love interest, the two characters are engaged but they hate each other and then it's them I guess falling back in love with each other as they realise as they as they start playing pranks as they try and make the other person f they can't break the engagement otherwise they'd have to pay for the whole of, of the wedding which has already been paid for. I feel as though the whole crux of the book is that it is based on miscommunication between the characters and if they're just communicated then they would realise that they didn't actually hate each other that they just weren't communicating and I it was like the whole plot was just based on this them miscommunicating and if they're just communicated and I hate the miscommunication trope so I think that's why it really annoyed me I was just like talk to each other use your voice and uh, yeah that, that's what bugged me I'd say uh, I mean the writing style I liked again and I could see myself trying more Sarah Hoggle books in the future but hopefully they wouldn't have any miscommunication in them. Um, I then had a little novella binge, well not really binge, but uh, I, went, I was going into the office quite a bit and I couldn't carry a book with me so I took my Kindle uh, and on my lunch break I was like oh, what should I read and so I just read um, some novellas and, and as I was in that week I was like well lunchtime novella time. So I read The Emperor's Soul by Brandon Sanderson and I thoroughly enjoyed this novella. It was but something that's so short, it was so, so good. I mean, I think I gave it 4.5 stars because I was like, it's hard to give a novella five stars, but because I would have liked it to have been fleshed out more. Like, I feel as though he could have done a lot. He could have had a much wider story with the premise, which I won't go into too much because it is a novella, but it is basically following a character as she is enlisted to recreate the Emperor's soul. And I use this for the Hades prompt because the Emperor is pretty dead or brain dead and there are also like there there are these creatures in it that are made from the bones of dead creatures but I really really enjoyed it I really liked the main character I really liked the magic system it was so so interesting like Brandon Sanderson is an expert at magic systems uh, and I, yeah I would have just loved more that's the only thing I would have wanted more because I couldn't have any more but I decided that it was still on the Brandon Sanderson novella train I read Snapshot by him for the Apollo prompt and yet again he does a very very good novella and this one was more sci-fi-esque it's not set in the cosmic at all unlike Emperor's Soul and it was it, it was really interesting it was in this world uh police officers can like go into this place called Snapshot where they're able to relive a day and see if they can catch a killer by re-experiencing that day and it, it's the day exactly as though what the people are doing exactly what they would have done and so interesting so interesting uh so yeah i mean such an interesting premise if you can relive day and like what you'd use that technology for but yeah i didn't get the there was a twist at the end i wasn't expecting it i was like oh, really really 
so very yeah very very interesting i then read the hod king by josiah bancroft for the hestia prompt this was an impromptu i basically requested this at the library and the same day that i requested they were like it was ready for you and i was like oh i wasn't ready i wasn't prepared for this i didn't expect it but there it was ready for me so i went and collected it and i read it and at the time that i was reading it so many people were reading it it was like everyone was reading the hob king and I was like, impromptu buddy read then, because everyone's reading this. So this is the third book in the Books of Babel series, the first one being Seven and Ascends. And unlike, unlike a lot of people, I like this series, but I don't love it. So I feel as though it's got a lot of potential, but there's always something that I struggle with. So this being the third book, I won't get too much into the plot, but the first one is you're following our main character, Senlin, as him and his wife embark on their honeymoon to the Tower of Babel. And at the very beginning of that book, Senlin and Myra, his wife, separate and he spends the rest of the books trying to find her. In this time, he and her, I guess, experience, have, have different experiences in the tower. They start to question their morals and where they are and what the tower, the impact of the tower is going to be having on their life and if they'll be able to live a life together following the tower. So this one, I really, really enjoyed the themes in this. I think the themes were excellently done. Again, like with the first two books, I really liked the writing style. The writing style was, it was very beautifully written. And there were some, there were definitely some passages in here. I was like, oh, wow, that's a very, very poignant passage. And the themes of, in this one, it's in a society where I guess image wins and like what you look like and that the society is based on the society is based on perception it's it was a very interesting like critique on the society and you can sort of see elements of that in our own society and see the reflection of that so i really liked those themes and i liked the themes explored in this however my biggest critique with this is the pacing and the structure of the book because unlike the first book which is pretty much all told from Selen's perspective we are now at this point where we have multiple perspectives which I really enjoy and I think they definitely add to the book however in the way this book is structured you end up with Selen's perspective then you have other characters perspectives and then you have other characters perspectives uh, and you're each living the same time frame in each one and so you end up going back in time and it just felt like I would have preferred if the perspectives were mixed together and they were, in, they were interspersed the way a normal a normal multiple perspective story is told because especially at the end of part two not so much at the end of Selen's part but at the end of part two we're at this very climactic scene it's as though it's leading to the conclusion and the denouement of the book and then suddenly you get to part three and you're back again to the beginning and so it just lost all that momentum and suddenly you're reliving scenes that you've already seen before from another character's perspective and for some people that worked, but for me, it really didn't. So I really struggled when I moved into part three and was like, oh, what is going on? Why are we seeing this again? But I found it's been very tricky to rate this book. I feel like it's a high 3.5, that it's like a 3.75. But it's just, it's been really tricky for me to think about how I would rate this and what, what I would give it. Because I loved the themes in this. I really, really enjoyed that. I liked the writing style, but I really struggled with the pacing. I then have The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller, which I read for the Zeus prompt because this is a patriarchy. And this was a fun YA. I think, again, I gave this three stars. Like, it didn't really do anything different for me. Like, it was fun. It was quick. Like, I read it very, very quickly. Uh, it is quite short, but it didn't really add anything to me or it didn't really give me anything that I haven't read before. I don't feel as though I got a lot out of this. Like I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. So it was just, it was just fine. It just, it, I mean, you're following this main character who goes to court in order to woo the king and then her aim is to kill the king. So she is able to have power over the whole of the empire. And the thing is, the whole book I was just like, she thinks she's a badass, but she really isn't. She's not, she's not. She's a teenage girl who's rebelling against her parents. Like, but the whole book, she's like, I'm such a badass. I'm such a badass. I'm such a bad and I'm like grow up so that's where my biggest fault was I was just like you're just a teenage girl rebelling and so I couldn't believe her motives I read Sea Glass by Maria V Snyder for the Athena prompt and I read this with my friend Vish from Books with V and our friend Sam we have been reading one of these books roughly every month since the beginning of the year and making our way through Maria V Snyder's books 
and she has so many of them. And this is the, I guess, the fifth one in the overall overall Chronicles of Ixia, but the second book in the Glass trilogy. Uh, I struggled a little bit with this because it, the first, I don't know, one, 200 pages were very repetitive and clunky. It felt as though Marie Vissanide didn't really have like a clear plan for the plot. And so it just ended up with our, the main character, Opal, getting into frustrating situations and then ha that happening again and again and again. Um, and so the plot didn't really, it was just, it was just frustrating. I mean, the writing is, it's very quick. It's very easy to read. Each chapter pretty much ends on a cliffhanger. So you feel as though you have to continue on to the next one. And you're like, oh, what's going to happen next? I will say it definitely improved in the second half of the book. Like you could see where the plot was going. It had like a direction again. And it definitely became a lot more interesting in the second half. But the first half, I wasn't, I, I, I struggled. And it was easy to read, but it was a little bit of a struggle because I wasn't sure Maria V. Snyder as an author knew exactly where she wanted to go with the plot. So I haven't, I'd say I have definitely preferred the original trilogy more than this second trilogy. And I don't necessarily know why. I don't know if they're becoming a bit more formulaic. Uh, and like in the first trilogy, it was fine and fun, whereas now I feel as though potentially Marie Snyder has a has a formula and she sticks to it. Uh, I'm currently reading the third book and I'm enjoying that one. So but that will be in my July wrap up. But yeah, it, it had its strengths and then it had its weaknesses. And it wasn't my favourite in the series. But I am really enjoying the experience of reading it with Samovich. They're, they're like some of my best friends to buddy read with. Yeah, I read This Is How You Lose The Time War and I read this for the Aries prompt. And this, it, it, this one, I also, like The Hold King, I struggled to rate this one because it is beautifully written. It is, the prose is stunning. It's very, very poetic. I believe I looked up the authors and they, one of them was a poet. So that I could, can see how that was influenced in the story. Like the writing style was beautiful. Yeah, I, like I really enjoyed reading. I was like reading and going, this is a beautiful passage. Like this is beautifully written. But I also struggled to tell the difference between the two characters. So the two characters are different, I guess, CIA agents in this for two separate organisations and they're in a war across time and each of the agents is trying to take down the other agent and in the process of this they start writing letters to each other and realise that potentially they no longer hate each other and they're no longer opposing, they're just stuck with being on opposing sides. One is called red and one is called blue but sometimes I just forgot who was who. Like they both, they didn't really read very differently. I didn't find as though they had that much personality. So that's why they sort of read exactly the same. So I'd forget who, which agent was for which organisation. I did, I think, because some of the book is told in like plot and then you have um, letters. So the, and I would say I liked the epistolary style uh, and the letters more than the plot. Like I, I enjoyed reading those letters. I, don't, I, I feel it felt very hard to rate it. I gave it three stars, but I don't really know. Like could be a four stars it could be a two stars I, was like, I don't really know what to rate this i just i didn't really know and i still don't really know because i don't so it's in at three stars but i, I don't know i don't know if it's one of those books where it's you get a more from it from a reread when you know what's going to be happening i wouldn't say the plot is like necessarily like the most inventive plot is the writing that really propels it but that i think it would really depend if you like so not and if you like purple prose because if you don't like if you want something direct then I would not read this. But if you enjoy very flowery, beautiful writing style, then give it a go. I read Earth's End for the Hephaestus, not the Hepatitis prompt as I wanted, to, as I keep wanting to call it. Hepatitis, Hephaestus. The Hephaestus prompt, so fire on the cover, I read Earth's End by Elise Cover. This is the third book in the Air Awakens series. And yet again, it was another three star. Like there was a lot of average this month. And I don't know if this one was, this book in the series was suffering from middle book syndrome, I would say. And potentially because I'd had a break between, I read one and two back to back, then I had this break between three. I don't know if this series would, is potentially better if you just binge it all the way through. You just see the books all as one. And so you don't have this one which felt very middle booky. It just felt weaker than the first two, I would say. Um, I mean, there were some elements that I really, really liked in it. I mean, overall, I still like the characters, I still like the magic system, I still like the writing, and I think it's very well written for a self-published book. It feels as though, I don't know what the editing process that Elise Cover has, but it feels very well edited. That I, I don't notice any, like, typing errors within the text, I don't notice any, like, redundancy with any of the words. 
I, I don't it doesn't feel as though it needs like editing down at all like it feels like a very good length I'd say it's just very well polished however with this book it it did feel a bit middle booky um as I said but as well I just had a few I don't know issues with the plot in, in, in this story as a whole you are following this kingdom and as they are expanding uh and the expansion of that kingdom and you'll realize you realize in this book that one of the characters is like oh is our country actually good or should we actually be trying to conquer these other empires kingdoms countries should we actually be doing this is, is this is this a good thing because i mean what you've been told your whole life is it's good expansion is good and it's the sort of realization of that but then it was just brushed over very very quickly like she had this realization and she was like oh this is wrong and then it was over with and we were just continuing on with the war and i was like are we going to come back to to that are we going to come back to that i know mean, maybe we do but it, it felt very quick as though and i would have liked that theme to be explored more the same there was like a theme of um alcoholism in this book and again that was very it was brought up and then it was brushed over and I feel as though if you're going to be tackling these themes of like colonialism and alcoholism, then I feel as though what you should be, if you're going to be broaching them, then you should sort of expand upon them and give them like the depth that they require. And I don't feel as though they were given the depth and the page time that they should have had. Uh, I will definitely be continuing with the series and I look forward to seeing how it ends. I've got books four and five still to read. And I do find them very, very quick and easy to read. Um, so I definitely need to work on finishing it. It's one of my series that I have to finish. Okay, and then the final books for me to talk about, I read uh, The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty and The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. And I, I mean, I love these both. I read this one like in the middle of the month and I read this one right on the final day of the month. Uh, and I read these uh, via audiobook, so I just had them on gradually throughout the whole month as I did a few puzzles. I didn't do that many puzzles this month, unfortunately. So I don't, don't have any to show off this time, but I love these books like love them love them so the kingdom of copper i read for the artemis prompt because the us cover is set at night i mean if, if you're being picky that i have this uk one then i guess i could fit this into aphrodite because i didn't use the aphrodite prompt so there we go love it love it love it and the empire of gold i used for the poseidon prompt which was my team prompt so i got double points uh, and that was why I picked this one up. I was originally going to read this one for Poseidon. And then I saw that this one was just under 700 pages. And to get the page bonus, I needed a 700 page book. And this one fit that. So I decided to read them both. I, I mean, it wasn't a hardship at all because I love these books and I love this series. And it's one of my favourite series of all time. Like, these are more than five stars. Like, there's a five star book and then there's these. And the audiobooks I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, this was the third time reading this one and the second time reading this one and I would highly recommend these. So the premise of these, it's set in a Middle Eastern inspired world and the magic system in it is like Davers, Jinn. And I really, really enjoyed that mythology and that's interspersed throughout all the books and it's so, so interesting. But yeah, and the magic system as a whole, so interesting. Uh, but the strengths of these, and I'd say the first book has it a little bit but it's really expanded in these second and third ones is like the political intrigue the sort of the warring factions between the different jinn families uh and the sort of the tensions between them the mythology the characters there and their dynamics is another aspect of what i really really love about these i love our main character nari uh and how she starts off as a in cairo in that in a in the human world until she discovers that she is part part jinn and is able to perform healing magic and is taken to the magical city of Devabad where she meets both Dara and Ali and I love them all and I think the characters the characters and their interactions they're so good so so good like such interesting characters and dynamics and it's just so well done and the ending I was on I was out for a walk on my lunch break and I was just like don't cry Abby don't cry like and the thing is I knew you know I know what was going to happen I know what was going to happen but and I didn't cry, but it was emotional still. And it is an emotional ending. Uh, I think it's one of the best endings uh, like of a trilogy. It's really satisfying. Like it's a very, very satisfying ending, but it, there's bittersweet elements to it as well. And so it's not as though everything's tied up with a very, very neat bow. I think it's a very well done ending to a trilogy. And I cannot wait for more S.A. Shackle books because 
otherwise I'll just have to start rereading again if she doesn't come out with anything but I need more books by her because she is an absolute favourite author and if you're going to read any of these books then read the Dave's Bad Trilogy because they are amazing and I would highly 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 recommend and these were the highlight of my month even though they were rereads they were the highlight so those are all of the books that I read in the month of June I had such an amazing reading month uh, and it really like being part of the readathon it encouraged me to like uh, keep reading even when I was busy at work and I was like come on Abby you can do it and that's why I did read some more novellas than I normally would but it gave me the push to read those novellas like I've wanted to read all the novellas that I read this month anyway so it was a great push to read them and I had just so much fun so so much fun and yeah I would highly recommend if we not highly recommend if we do another readathon I would recommend joining because I had a lot of fun with it and it made me like think outside the box as well with making sure I was reading books for the prompts I mean as a mood reader it is a little bit of a challenge but I made it work for me it was fine um I mean I still had four left over and I probably would never have got to the Demeter prompt because I do not have any books with food on the cover unless we're really starting to stretch it if you took part in the Olympics readathon what was your favorite book what team were you on and yeah tell me what your experience was so thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will see you in my future videos bye